Pubic piercings, pros, cons, advantages, disadvantages. Buy a piercer, episode number 37 coming up next. So stick around. For those that are new to the channel, my name is Dave O. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994. I own and operate the Axiom Body Piercing Studio located here in Des Moines, Iowa, inside Skin Kitchen Tattoo. So when I talk to you about this, I'm talking to you at a level of expertise as someone who has performed this piercing and helped people through the healing process. Before I get into that, I need to give you a little bit of a disclaimer. Um, this is a piercing where we are talking about a male genital piercing. If you are not interested in hearing about that, or don't want to hear about anything that has to do with anything with the male anatomy in general, I suggest you find a different video. There's plenty of videos on here that are uh, not only uh, have absolutely nothing to do with genital piercings or anything sexual, but also are about tattooing and piercing in our age appropriate for the most part. Um, if you're looking for any type of sexual gratification or some form of excitement, you're going to be sadly disappointed. This video is solely for educational purposes for those considering getting this piercing and maybe the partners of those that want to get this done and, uh, you know, general people who are curious. So let's talk a little bit about what this piercing is and where it's located at. This piercing is located in the pubic area of the male genitalia. It is basically right at the base of the penis on the top. Not a very common piercing. It's kind of unusual and uh, is usually done with a ring or a curved barbell. With that out of the way, let's move on to the pros. Number one. This piercing is not going to interrupt sexual activity as much as other male genital piercings would. Um, it is located kind of out of the way. It is at the top. It will get a little bit of bumping and agitation maybe in certain activities, but for the most part, it's not going to be as intrusive as, say, a, P a Prince Albert piercing would be or a frenum piercing. Number two. It's not going to affect walking or other activities as much. It's kind of been an area where other than possibly some rubbing its clothing, etc., cetera, is not going to get in the way as much as other piercings would. Number three, it enhances the look of the area. If done correctly, it can kind of add a little bit of sparkle to that area of the body and beautify it and make it look a little different, thus customizing how you look. Number four, this is a piercing that is extremely unusual and somewhat rare. It's not a piercing that I do a lot. It's not a piercing that I see a lot. It's kind of an older piercing and it's kind of fallen by the wayside for a couple of reasons we'll get into when we get into the cons. Number five, this is a piercing that you can have and no one needs to know that you have it unless you tell them about it or, you know, they see it because you're a sexual, uh, you're sexually involved with them or what have you. Um, if you live in an area of the world that's very conservative or you work in a job in an office where they're very conservative, where piercings are not allowed or kind of looked down on, this is a piercing you can have in most people is not going to affect your day-to-day -day life as much as like, let's say, a nostril piercing or a septum piercing would. With the, with the pros out of the way, let's move on to the cons, the disadvantages of this particular piercing. The first one is it is prone to re rejecting. And for those that don't know what rejecting is, rejecting is where your body completely pushes the jewelry out of the piercing. Because of where it's located at, it is prone to this. Um, it's not really in a ideal location. Um, there can be a lot of stress and strain on this part of your body during certain activities and it can migrate. It's definitely something you want to consider before getting this piercing done. I would say the success rate on it is probably 70%, maybe. Number two, provides no additional stimulation for the person who has it. This is not a piercing that's going to enhance sexual activity that much. You're not going to feel any different. Um, other than maybe during the healing process, it's going to be a little tender and not like being messed with. 
Number three, cannot exchange bodily fluids on near around the piercing until it, uh, for a minimum of six months. This piercing, where it's located at, can make it kind of difficult to cover up with a condom, but you do need to wear one for the first six months uh, after it's healed. Not so much for uh, prevention of STDs as much at, in pregnancy, which is normally why we practice safe sex, but to cut down the likelihood of an exchange of bacteria when the piercing is an open wound and when it is most fragile and could possibly cause tears in the piercing during activity and then an exchange of bacteria. Number four, even after this piercing is healed, you are more at risk of getting an STD than you would if you didn't have this piercing. Uh, you have a hard metal, very strong in soft tissue. It is possible during certain activities because sex tends to be a little bit on the aggressive side sometimes, and that area does get a lot of contact, that this piercing, well, you'll get a tear in it and then exchange of a virus, and then you have an STD. So whenever switching partners, you're going to need to practice safe sex. Number five, the last one. This piercing can bleed off and on anywhere from one three to five days, varies from person to person, um, during which time you're going to probably need to make precautions such as wearing a sanitary napkin, pad, or panty liner, um, just to cut down not only the likelihood of, in, of uh, embarrassing stains on your clothing that are hard to explain, but also to cut down the amount of moisture in the area and add a little bit of cushioning during the initial healing phase. Now let's move on to the consultation. What I would say to you if you came into my studio and you said, hey, Davo, I'd like to get a pubic piercing. First thing I'm going to tell you is right off the bat, this is a piercing that's prone to migration or rejection. It is not a surface to surface piercing, but it's pretty darn close. Uh, it is a piercing that you kind of have to go into it knowing that there is a possibility that your body is not going to accept the piercing. Second thing I'm going to tell you is average healing time is anywhere from six to eight weeks but I do suggest treating it like a healing piercing for a minimum of three months, during which time you're going to want to do hot soaks um, with warm water and sea salt or uh, use a sterile saline spray such as Nelmed wound wash for five to ten minutes twice daily and then rinse afterwards. Also, uh, anytime you feel like you've contaminated the area, if you have any health issues that may affect your ability to heal or your body's ability to fight off infection, like immune deficiency problems, diabetes, et cetera, I'm gonna suggest that you clean off the area with an antimicrobial or germicidal soap at least once a day uh, during the healing period. The only other time I would do, if you don't have any of those issues, health issues, is that anytime you feel like you've contaminated the area, that you clean it with a good antimicrobial germicidal soap. Cross-contamination prevention. Most of this is common sense stuff. Wash your hands before you handle it. Uh, no oral contact or exchanging of bodily fluids on near around the piercing for a minimum of six months. As I said earlier, that doesn't mean you have to wait six months to have sex. That just means you need to use some type of latex barrier. Sex whenever you're comfortable, gentle at first. If it hurts to do something, you need to stop and do something else or rest for a little while and try again. You want to avoid um, any type of warming agent, spermicide, or any additional stimulants. If you're using any type of lubricant, it needs to be water-based. No, uh, keep your environment clean. Clothing, bedding, towels, anything that may come in contact with the piercing until it is completely healed. Um, keep pets away from it. Don't let them sleep in the bed with you. Do not submerge the piercing in bodies of water. You can't control the quality of, which is pretty much everything but your own clean bathtub. So in other words, no swimming for at least three months. In addition, this piercing, as I mentioned earlier, can bleed up to five days. It's a good idea to wear some type of a sanitary napkin or pad uh, to not only cut down the likelihood of staining clothing, but also to add a little bit of cushioning during that initial tender phase and cut down the amount of moisture in the area when it's most acceptable to infection. So that's all I have to say on pubic piercings. Uh, that's the pros and cons, the advantages, disadvantages. I hope you learned something. If you feel like I've covered something but didn't really go in depth enough for you or you have additional questions or you feel like I forgot something or maybe you have this piercing and would like to share your experience with other people, please leave a comment. I usually answer them when I have time. If you liked the video, give us a thumbs up and let us know that you liked it. 
Um, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. We post four to five videos a week focusing on education for tattooing in body piercing and body modifications. Uh, hit that notification bell so you don't miss a single one of them. One more thing, if you like uh, like the channel and you like to support us and look stylish at the same time, check out our merch store. We got various every designs there for t-shirts, hats, uh, dog bandanas, bedan uh, bedazzled uh, tote bags, etc. All must go. And Christmas is coming up, or maybe birthday or some form. It would make a nice gift. Till next time, hope all your piercings heal with ease and without a single issue. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope to see you for your body piercing needs in the future. Have a good day, everybody.